Hey, this is Annie Grace, and I'm the author of This Naked Mind and the creator of The Alcohol Experiment. If you haven't heard of The Alcohol Experiment, it is a totally free, always will be, 30-day challenge where you can just interrupt your patterns and get back to the version of yourself who didn't need alcohol to relax or have a good time. But that no way means The Alcohol Experiment leads to abstinence. It is just a place for you to test out for yourself what role you want alcohol to have in your life and go through a massive mindset shift. So today we are talking about the health benefits when you stop drinking. And I got this question from a reader. She says, hi, Annie, thank you so much for all your efforts towards improving people's lives. There's a lot of information out there. And I'm just wondering if you can do a feature compiling the health benefits of stopping drinking and really what that looks like. And so, yes. So, um, she says, I'd be, I know it's purported to improve sleep quality, skin appearance, and all that, but I'd be very interested in what about liver function, blood pressure, cardiovascular fitness, that kind of thing. So, wow, this is crazy. If, if this video makes you uncomfortable, I highly recommend just doing yourself the benefit of trying the alcohol experiment. There's nothing to lose. It's always free at alcoholexperiment.com um, because I'm going to get into some stuff. I'm going to get into what alcohol does to the body, and that's how we know the health benefits of putting alcohol kind of behind you or taking a break. And, and honestly, any break, any reduction in your alcohol consumption is massively awesome for you, <laughs> for your body, for your mental health, for your, for your well-being. So it's so, so, so good. All right, so we're going to go kind of through the body here, right? Um, first of all, let's talk about the brain. Uh, there is a PhD, his name is, I think, Adam White, and he said, quote, if recreational drugs were tools, then alcohol is a sledgehammer in terms of how it affects all parts of your brain and body. It's just absolutely like, because there's nothing really that isn't effective. Alcohol is the cause of 60 plus diseases, various diseases within the body and definitely is is hugely carcinogenic means alcohol causes cancer that is something that most people are actually surprised to know um, but just two drinks a week can increase a woman's chance of breast cancer by 15 percent the great news is that just reducing your drinking or taking 30 days alcohol free with the alcohol experiment again that's alcoholexperiment.com totally can reverse that and it can it can lessen your chances of cancer so Let's go through kind of the brain. So in terms of, of making your brain out of balance, alcohol is a depressant. And so as a result from it being a depressant, your body releases stimulants to counterbalance that. So these are things like adrenaline and cortisol. These are well-known stimulants. If you're drinking every single day, your body is constantly releasing these stimulants in order to counterbalance the depressant nature of alcohol. Now your body's main goal is to maintain in homeostasis, to keep itself in balance. What that means is that you have a lot more adrenaline. You've heard of like adrenal fatigue, a, a lot more cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. These things you are voluntarily creating more of in your body in order to kind of counteract the fact that alcohol is a depressant and to keep you going. Now, one of the things you'll notice when you first stop drinking is you take that depressant away, but the brain doesn't get the message immediately because it's, it's actually like thinking, okay, we're gonna drink today like we did yesterday and the day before and for the last 10 years. And then all of a sudden you don't drink, there's no depressant, but you still have overaction of stimulants. And so you might feel jittery or you might feel uncomfortable or you might feel more stressed. Now that changes very quickly. The brain is super smart. It rebalances very quickly, but you need to know that by drinking, you are increasing the levels of, of cortisol and adrenaline in your body. Um, there's all sorts of other hormonal ways that alcohol throws the brain and the body out of balance, but that in our highly stressed society, I thought is really a, an important one to talk about, especially because so many of us, me included, I did so much drinking to relieve my stress, right? It's like, who knew? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Um, sleep. Let's talk about alcohol's effect on sleep. Alcohol specifically, there's so much to this. I'm actually working with some incredible researchers at a university in Australia to do a specific study on alcohol and sleep, how alcohol affects sleep levels, how it affects dreaming, how it affects how you feel, how it affects how well you sleep, how it affects how many wake-ups you have, all of this sorts of stuff. It's going to be absolutely fascinating. So that's to come um, some really proprietary research about this. But one of the things we know for sure is alcohol affects your ability for REM sleep. That's rapid eye movement sleep. REM sleep is vital. It is the restorative, very, very important thing. When they deprived rats of REM sleep, they would go psychotic, like literally insane. 
And so you may not have been getting really good restful periods of REM sleep for a very long time if you drink nightly before you go to bed. I used to, again, ironically, drink to fall asleep. I felt like I needed that nightcap to fall asleep, yet I would always be awake at three in the morning wondering like, oh gosh, what's happening? And again, I had that whole release of adrenaline. So I'd wake up, not just wake up, but wake up like, oh, okay, oh gosh. What did I do? How much did I drink? And that was so intense for me. It was so intense. So that's one of the things that alcohol really does is, is it messes with your sleep, not only a little bit, but to the point where it can have knock on effects to all sorts of other areas of your body and your health because sleep is so important um, in your heart. There's a lot of things that alcohol does in your heart that are not great, but one of those things is that alcohol actually stretches and droops your heart muscles. So it makes them like less taut and it makes it harder for your heart to pump blood. So that can have very nasty consequences, especially later in life um, and especially for people with weak hearts. But for anybody, it's really uh, not good for your heart at all. There, there's not, and again, these things start to heal, which is the, the really inspiring things here. Um, weight gain. So one of the aspects of alcohol is the body wants to say, hey, that's, that's toxic. We want to get that out of our system as soon as possible. In fact, you know, alcohol is as ethanol. That's the thing that they, you put in your gas tank. That's also the thing that gets you drunk. That's the same chemical compound, the same little letters and numbers, the same thing, ethanol, alcohol that you put in your body, that you put in your gas tank. It's the same news flash. I know it's not popular. Again, if this is freaking you out, Join me, 100% free, alcoholexperiment.com, and just, you know, do your own experiment on if you feel better, because my bet, and now, you know, there's over 110,000 people have gone through it, their bet is that you certainly will. So anyway, it's ethanol, and what happens is that the body says, I have to purge this, I have to get this out, so it stops doing other things. It stops regulating your blood sugar as well. So that's really bad if you have blood sugar issues and, and um, you know, even are diabetic. It stops digesting food because it needs to purge the alcohol. So you don't know that you're full. I don't know if anybody's with me in America for those 3 a.m. Taco Bell runs where you've been eating and drinking all night, but all of a sudden you feel starving at 3 a.m. That's because you have a load of food in your gut, but none of it has gotten to your body. Your brain hasn't been signaled because the alcohol, your body's saying purge the alcohol, leave that stuff in your gut. So you can end up eating a lot more and feeling a lot more hungry despite eating and have those crazy food binges because your body is saying, no, job one is to purge the alcohol. So forget digestion, forget regulating blood sugar, forget these other functions because it's so much more important that we purge alcohol and eliminate alcohol because that's the number one toxin here. Your body is so phenomenal, you guys. It's so smart, it's so brilliant. And it does this to keep us alive. One of the most mind blowing moments for me in this whole journey and my own personal journey was when I realized that like all that puking all you did, all that worshiping the porcelain God, that puking was my body saying, hey, we're going to be alive tomorrow. I'm not letting you die tonight. It was my body saving my own life. And I just thought it was some inconvenience. You know, alcohol just makes you sick, but it's not an inconvenience like when you're puking, you know, you have, you have a flu or something. This is literally the body purging the alcohol so you don't die. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And, and anyway, I thought it was kind of like, oh yeah, I puked last night, man, really overdid it. Oh geez. Anyway, anyway. So um, in terms of your cancer risk, we talked about that a little bit. It immediately goes down when you stop drinking. Anything less that you drink than you used to drink, you're reducing your cancer risk, which is great. And that's true for all of these things. Just even a 30 day break, reset your body gives you a whole new perspective especially through the alcohol experiment because we give you a mindset shift every single day so that you actually want to make the decision that um, you want to make you're no longer governed by like conditioning or the media or the news your eyes are open to all of that stuff and you get to make a decision without fear that you really want to to make that again is at alcoholexperiment.com um, fertility Fertility is a big one and we don't talk about it enough. Here is the thing, okay, alcohol affects fertility in women and that makes sense, it, it throws your hormones out of balance, I'm, I'm referring to my notes here. Uh, alcohol affects fertility in men in a really big way. And we know this for women. We say, okay, if you're trying to get pregnant, your doctor's gonna tell you to stop drinking. Very few doctors are telling men to stop drinking if they're trying to have a baby, right? But alcohol um, is like, number one is erectile dysfunction. So it makes it harder to 
to actually, you know, maintain a, an erection and, and do the deed. Number two, and this is probably more intense from this perspective, is it lowers what's called sperm motility, which makes fertilization li less likely. Basically, it's kind of like making the sperm lazier. So they don't actually reach the egg because it, it like drugs them. And so that's interesting. And so alcohol actually has really been linked to infertility, but a lot of the times it's not because of the woman, it's because of the man and because we don't realize that men should stop drinking, at least when they're trying to conceive as well. Um, alcohol from a skeletal perspective, it actually reduces your body's ability to absorb minerals, but even more than that, it leaches minerals from your body. So your, your bones become much more susceptible to breaking. And that is not a good combination with the fact that, let's be honest, your motor coordination is affected and you can fall more often. So, you know, definitely lots of injuries. I have a good friend who is a police, or sorry, he's a, um, oh my gosh, fire department, fireman. He is a fireman uh, for the city of Fort Collins, Colorado. And he said that 80% of, he's first responder obviously to lots of cases. And he said 80% of them are alcohol related. And it always increases the injury almost always because of how alcohol, whether it's breaking more bones or just doing things you wouldn't normally do or getting in fights you wouldn't normally get in fights or driving in a way that you wouldn't normally drive, whatever the case is, he's like, it is insane how much of his work is alcohol related. Um, and then let's see, um, now this is something you might not know, alcohol, uh, according to Dartmouth College researcher Catherine Cottingham, just two and a half beers or a glass of white wine, if you drink that every day um, and you're tested, your arsenic levels are 20 to 30% higher than people who don't drink. So that's just something, again, that's overlooked. There's arsenic and alcohol. You know, there's also pesticides and all sorts of other things, um, not to mention it's ethanol, like you put in your gas tank, but, but that's just something to consider. So it is pretty much like Dr. Aaron White said, alcohol is a sledgehammer. And so when you take a break, when you join us for the 30 day alcohol experiment, when you see how fresh and alive, and I mean, I lost 13 pounds in the first time I did a 30 day break from alcohol. It was amazing. It was effortless. Um, my skin looks better than it ever had. I always had like adult acne. I still do sometimes, but it's, it's tons better. Uh, and then the people in the experiments, I don't have specific statistics, but over and over blood pressure going down, you know, blood sugar levels regulating people have even gotten off multiple medications just because they cut alcohol out of their life. So it is just absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. So um, yay, I love you guys' comments. This is so great. And again, there's, there's no regretting it. I love how, I love how a friend of mine said, she's like, you know, I never regretted a night not drinking. <laughs> and so if you decide, okay, this is intense. I want to do something about it. I'm not going to scare you in the alcohol experiment. It is just a mindset shift. Again, it's totally free. It is at alcoholexperiment.com. Every day you get a video and an email from me, and we would love to see you there. Hi, I'm so excited, you guys, because we are just about to start another live alcohol experiment. And if you do not know about the alcohol experiment, you need to literally drop everything right now and go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash LAE. That's LAE for live alcohol experiment. And here's the thing. This 30-day challenge is designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You know it's that version that's living the most joyful life, that version that doesn't need alcohol to relax, or have a good time and that version that's having more fun and is more peaceful for, than ever. Again, it's a 30-day challenge. It's live. It's starting on the first. So hurry up. Go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash LAD. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.